I, I don't, you know, listen, I'm be real with you. After what happened with Spider-Man 2, you're going to have the quiet eye for Wolverine. Mm. How woke is this thing going to be? What's going on <laughs> over here? What Are we going to have X-23 here too as well? Is she going to replace Wolverine before the game is over? Mm. What What's going to really happen? Is Sabretooth going to be uh, changed into a female? Like, what's what's going to really happen here? Well, how woke is this game going to be? The problem is Marvel lost their credibility. They passed that on to Sony. Sony had to put that woke nonsense inside Spider-Man 2. Mm. Oh, so, so your, your concern, not to cut you, but I just, I just want to be clear. Your concern is because right now there is a contingent that are not happy with the MCU movies. Oh, based yeah. on what you're saying, right? So you're, you're saying that maybe the Marvel shine is not at its highest right now and they're locked into a contract with something that could be... They locked into the Titanic. Mm. Marvel's best days is 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 pretty much behind them until they can get it together. They haven't shown that they're able to get it together. Okay. Yeah. Look, I get it. You, you originally clicked on these videos titled Woke to see how far content creators would push it. You got a good laugh out of it. Well, I wonder what Kanye West thinks of the woke crowd now, but a uh, couple of videos in and you're not laughing anymore. Now you're beginning to realize exactly how real this gets, how it extends far beyond just a few gifts and internet memes that everybody online recycles and pretends like they're the first to make or discover. You beat us? Don't feel too bad, gang. We only beat you by one hour, 12 minutes, and 43 seconds. It's all fun and games until the woke stuff is proven to be real. Because then there is no denying it. Because then you start to realize the hold it has on the youth and how harmful that can be. But that's a discussion for a different platform. I'd be out of my mind to have it on YouTube. This platform doesn't have a list of things you can get away with. It only has a list of things you can't do. But you know what? It's fine. Advertisers are not obligated to run ads on my content that goes directly against their own ideologies and what they're pushing. It wouldn't make sense to run a pro-LGBT commercial on a video like this, right? So I'm no longer holding anything against YouTube. This is all on me. Accountability? Who are you and what have you done with Fratanga? Because I got responsibles now. Grow it up. Well, I entered 2024 thinking to myself, what kind of content can I make that Alex will finally stop copying? And I knew exactly what it was. And honestly, the subject is perfect for an obsessive freak like me. And the best part is, unlike these other anti-woke channels, I don't have to talk in code. If I get in trouble, I get in trouble. The worst thing YouTube can do to me right now is relieve me of my pain and suffering by terminating me. They'll be doing me a favor, and that's probably why they haven't deleted my channel yet. They want me to sit here and suffer. Got nothing left to lose. Nothing can hurt me anymore. Uh, for the longest time, it, it was pretty easy to get by. My, my enemies were nothing but incompetent buffoons. Console peasants, PlayStation fanboys, people with no power or influence. You know, the type that don't drop off their kids at school because they're afraid they're going to get bullied. There really isn't anything to fear when you know you can kick the asses of like 99% of the people who comment on your videos. But then comes the one thing I am scared of, the protected classes. But you know what I think is stupid? Complaining endlessly about things you can't change. <laughs> Just shut up about it, you angry little troll. See, as a man, you and I are not protected. Our job, sadly, is to be meat shields for the weaklings who must survive for some reason. See, as a man, naturally, there's more the world wants from you. It's just how it is. We pave the roads. We build the power grids. We send men to the moon. We end wars. We change your goddamn tire on the side of the road. If there's a job you need, 99% chance a man will do it. And yet, we're not even afforded something like a month dedicated to us. Guess who it is when your sister calls somebody to come help them because they're stranded in the middle of the road? That's right, a man. Guess who's gonna pay to get her towed out of the freeway? That's right, a man. Guess who's gonna check under the hood to see what's wrong with their car? That's right, a man. Guess who's gonna order the alternator and replace it for her so that she doesn't have to struggle? That's right. A man. Boys will be boys. Boys will be boys. Boys will be boys. Being a man is a thankless job. You just have to learn to accept the reality that unless you dye your hair purple, suddenly swing the other side for men, or want to completely change your gender, you ain't going to be protected. 
Society needs men on the front lines. And not just for their day-to-day -day life needs, but also as an enemy, as a boogeyman. Someone they can blame, but also crawl back to for help. And suddenly it's starting to make sense. You see why more men are trying to escape their own gender. It sucks. The women's bathroom is just so much cleaner. This bathroom is so much cleaner than ours. And on top of that, the opposite sex will treat you better. And you get to deal with this harsh reality. Well, let's not pretend like it's new though. Manhood being under attack has been going on forever. Unfortunately, when men started mingling with the women behind these movements, they helped usher in an era of pure nonsense. The Ambassador Award honors an individual who has helped the game industry advance to a better place. Anita Sarkeesian's work has done just that. The titles we've been discussing, the game makers have set up a series of possible scenarios involving vulnerable, eroticized female characters. Contrast, the way that women move in games isn't just used to suggest their confidence or their skill or some other facet of their personality. It's very often used in conjunction with other aspects of their design to make them exude sexuality for the entertainment of the presumed straight male player. Do you think the character model was actually like very distracting in not a good way? Because like with the camera angles chose and it just felt like this game seems like a game that came out in like 002 in terms of its you know like character design it's like a bit old and, and not flattering i don't think for a modern audience and i got news for you that means you're gay you have to force behaviors and if you don't force behaviors whether it's gender or race or just any way you want to say the composition of your team you're going to be impacted and that's not just not recruiting it is development as ken said and ultimately it's still going to take time but i am just as much shocked as ken is that we have not seen more opportunities we're going to have to force change what do i think about heroes well we've all seen them haven't we swanning about the place with their disproportionately high cheekbones and comically massive weapons. Wanker. What the hell is even that? In combination with her clothing and the game's camera angles, all of this is meant to drive the player's focus to her highly sexualized butt. So while working on The Last of Us, I had this secret agenda that's becoming less and less secret the more I talk about this stuff. Whether we want to admit it or not, these are role models. And yet we sexualize, we objectify, we marginalize, and we reduce these female characters a lot less than they can be. Why, he's, he's crying because he saw an ass? It's like the only thing activists are actively doing is trying to erase the very concept of manhood. I mean, just look at what is done to Digital Foundry. Back then, you couldn't go wrong with a nice piece of ass. After a meal like that, what I could use is a nice piece of ass. Now, a nice round plump yes! makes a grown ass adult like this uncomfortable. This nice, round, beautiful work of art is unappealing. Or so we're led to believe. How does this happen, Frit? I, I don't understand. It felt like we were going to only get better and evolve. The jiggle physics were supposed to be revolutionary. But now that is deemed unappealing. Well, what is appealing to the Western audience? That's okay, but free sample to a pretty lady. Sure, you know one? Do you see what happens, industry? Do you see what happens when you allow someone like Arnita Sarkeesian through your front door to sit down and talk to you about just how dangerous the male gaze is, how offensive it is. We must completely change this hobby that is suited for men and turn it into something for everyone. That way, it can be for no one. But Mrs. Kennedy, ba Bambi's a baby deer. Fuck baby deer, put a chicken in, make her gay. Who are these female characters for? They won't let men have anything. Our video game box under the TV was all we had left. And we begged them, please, please not our video games. And they went right for it, trying to scrub it clean of anything that was supposed to be for men. From the language used to the genders of the characters, down to their physique. They won't even allow the male gaze to be a thing. And unfortunately, I, I know it sounds 
really cruel to say this, but this type of ideology is perfect for the weak-minded individuals at Digital Foundry. They are the perfect subject for Anita's propaganda. They will fall to their knees and apologize for being men. And the first project we started kind of moving forward on was called Mankind. Uh, and the idea is very similar to what you've seen in The Last of Us, that the quarter-sept has jumped from insects to people. But ultimately it failed. Uh, and the reason it failed is because it was a misogynistic idea. I'll keep this short and sweet. You're weak, you're out of control, and you become an embarrassment to yourself and everybody else. You know, friend, not that I don't appreciate these types of rant videos, but uh, I've heard all of this before. So why are you bringing it up now? All oh, right, we're six minutes in and <laughs> I haven't even actually gotten to the subject. You'll have to excuse me, I I've been eating mad honey and I'm a little fucked up right now. Well, you'll see, it all has to do with the insomniac hack and leaks that came out about a week ago. I didn't get to get into more specifics. Because you see, in those leaks, there was a 12 minute long video titled Insomniac Inclusivity Studies. Insomniac's culture studies and protocols, including mandatory Discord sessions with queer, African American, and Asian groups. I really did the best under the circumstances of a person who hates people and yet had to be amongst them. I wish. I was pulling one on you guys, I really do. But apparently if you work at Insomniac, they make you sit down, watch this video, and then also have it made mandatory that you have Discord sessions with queer African American and Asian groups. Ooh, who is this? Cool. Uh, I'm yes. sorry, I'm sorry, I can't do this. I can't do this. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm a man of God, I can't do this. Oh no. The ESG money was not enough. Sweet Baby Inc. is not enough. Insomniac is going all out with their woke agenda. And now suddenly, that $300 million budget for Spider-Man 2 is starting to make a lot more sense, isn't it? Instead of giving you more playtime as Venom, instead of building more on Kraven, instead of spending time fixing all the bugs so that Spider-Man 2 wasn't a glitchy mess, no, Insomniac's priority instead is to ensure that you sit down and you talk to a gay black person on Discord Discord, because that'll ensure that you'll become a better game developer somehow. The video in question is about 12 minutes long, and honest to god, I don't think I can actually show you any of it. Nor do I think I'm actually gonna be able to get away with using audio samples, it is still a leak. And Insomniac is hammering down on channels, spreading any more leaks. So, what I will do is paraphrase everything, and describe to you exactly what was on screen. Maybe mix it up with some screenshots here and there. Believe me, this is not how I want to present what I'm covering, but remember, I'm already on my first community guideline warning. YouTube has cut monetization nearly in half, so I will do it the only way I can get away with it. Just describing it. Shit is so goddamn inclusive and diverse, it's almost offensive. Remember, they're just jokes. We're all gonna die. Mainstream media is so powerful for people who are coming of age and even younger folks. For them to see a representation of their own skin color, their own culture, their background on the big screen or on TV, I think it does tremendous things in terms of how they navigate the world. So the video opens up starting off with authentic portrayals in popular media, quote unquote, whatever that means. I haven't seen a single authentic portrayal of my people. They don't include chancla whoopings vacuum cable beatings, or a Mexican mother that sits down all day watching Tyler Perry and Medea laughing their asses off like it's the most hilarious thing they've ever seen. Well anyways, the first 28 seconds opens up, and evidently this has done absolutely nothing to improve writing, done nothing to improve box office numbers, nothing to improve ratings. The only people who are happy about this and are welcoming of it is the type of crowd that was responsible for pushing out something like Velma and She-Hulk. Diversity should come naturally in your writing. The minute you make it a quota, 
where you demand there must be this many minority characters in media is the minute it becomes inauthentic. It's just not believable. There is no authenticity to intentionally trying to make characters queer, trans, or black for the sake of meeting said quota. I mean, in general, there's nothing authentic about Hollywood. It's just a bunch of rich, elite, perverted snobs who've probably never even stepped into the household of an actual authentic Mexican family. Newsflash, it's not that interesting. It's not that special. It's not that unique. So I don't know why it's a priority. We eat, shit, and fight with each other just like white families. Seeing my people on the big screen means nothing to me when it's all orchestrated by a bunch of white liberals who think they know what my people do. Hell, I bet you anything the white liberals orchestrating all of this think hard shell tacos are real tacos. White people taco night. We're getting taco shells from the grocery store. Your average Mexican, Asian, black person, whatever. They just want to have a good time. They just want to sit down and watch a good movie. Your average minority will ask, is it good? Before they ever ask, is it full of black characters? You learn through what you're watching, what you're consuming, and it like really informs your life in a lot of ways. I would have come out sooner if there had been better portrayals of um, lesbians and queer people. Yeah, no, th that's what we call programming, and they're not very subtle about it either. And you're too stupid to see it. What mainstream media puts on the big screen is what they want you to believe, how they want you to operate, think, and feel. Art is a dangerous tool in the wrong hands. I mean, just listen to what this person said. They would have come out as queer a lot sooner if there was more representation in media. At that point, you're, you're basically admitting that you became queer out of being influenced by what you saw on screen. Monkey see, monkey do. And what's more, they say that like queer characters have not had an insane amount of representation in the last 20 years. How much more gay does it have to get? And should your bravery of coming out as queer even be the result of poorly written films? Her exact words are, you learn through consuming. No, you learn by living life. Life is your greatest teacher. If you're relying on Hollywood to be your guidance in life, you are getting the most inauthentic representation of what life is. These are not real people we're seeing on screen. These are characters written and purposefully placed in roles. Can you relate to those characters? Sure, but what you're seeing on screen is not a lived experience. It's all intentionally written to influence you, and it works. It's very important that the media portrays Puerto Rican or Latin culture accurately because people or communities that don't have any exposure to that culture or that medium, that's going to be the only experience they base what they know on that culture. All that money invested into trying to get the most authentic Puerto Rican household possible in Spider-Man 2 and they still got the goddamn flag wrong. Unbelievable. This shit writes itself. I'm not a comedian. A lot of people often tell me, Frank, you're funny. No, I'm not funny. The world is funny. How in the hell are you gonna have this much money and resources invested into having a team so committed to ensuring they nail it out of the park with their Puerto Rican representation, and yet they fuck up one of the most basic things that every Puerto Rican carries around with them? The flag. It doesn't add up. It doesn't make sense. It had to have been intentional. How is such an issue like this overlooked in the final product? It's hilarious because Insomniac actually did a better job at making an LGBT free version of their game. They scrubbed that game clean of anything to do with the Alphabet Mafia and they got it right. No mistakes there. Yet their diversity hires, their inclusion team messed up one of the most basic things Puerto Ricans associate with. It doesn't add up. Again, why does this always happen? Why is it whenever it's a diversity hire, they always fuck up? Why? Each and every single time. And they never produce anything good. Why is that? At this point, we are allowed to ask why. 
Because this is $300 million budget we're talking here. How much money went into this? And maybe is it time for you to cut it, Insomniac? Because look at how they failed at doing the most basic thing in their job description. Absolutely embarrassing. Meanwhile, your LGBT free version of the game has no mistakes. We'll take 20. If we do have like a positive portrayal in the show, it's, um, it's not authentic. It's like comfortable for other viewers instead of it being authentic. So. I feel like the farewell is a really good example of um, delving into actual nuanced Asian experiences. Aquafina is this Asian American immigrant going back to her family in China. It just wasn't concerned with like what white audiences were thinking. It was just for us, you know. It wasn't like doing something for for white audiences really. Well, you know, based on that haircut. Uh... You most certainly are not living the authentic Asian household life. Your parents would have torn you in half by now. Talk to me when you doctor! But Jesus Christ, could you imagine if this was the other way? Could you imagine if it was a white person saying, Yeah, we like it when things are made for us and not for people. We want them accepted. We want this to be for us. This is for our people. This is the complete opposite of being inclusive. Your whole goal is obviously not to make the content more inclusive. It's just to exclude white people. And you're being so open about it. Like, wow. It's just so perfectly normal to be that openly anti-white. We really have gone backwards. These are the type of people that they got working on Insomniac Games. Now it's all starting to make sense, isn't it? Gay prom escort missions, deaf girl graffiti missions, Peter Parker being outed of his own franchise. They want to take out the whiteness and replace it. And they're so goddamn open about it too. This entire team with funding in the millions can't even get the basic concept of inclusivity right. When you're being inclusive, you're not taking out other races, you're including more. And what's more is if you really want an authentic Asian experience, what are you doing? Trying to watch that through an American producer. Go watch actual foreign content, not this watered down Americanized version. That has been depicted in comic books long before you were even conceived by your parents. You're not introducing a new concept to the world. You're not introducing anything unique to this generation. You're simply oversaturating it. It's never enough. They're always looking for more and they won't stop reaching until every superhero has been race swapped at least 10 times. Being a hero for once being the main character for once. That is, even though part African American that is black, Miles Morales matters to me because he showed my, my little brother that we can be in these positions. We can be strong and big and positive. Which is hilarious because I bet her brother and his friends all look up to Goku and they don't care if he's got white skin. Nobody's asking for a black Goku. This is just something that only happens in Western media. And I keep wondering why. Race swapping has done nothing for characters. Nobody has done a single interesting storyline or has changed the course of a character by race swapping them. They still give them the same villains. They still give them the same city. They give them the same tasks. They just changed his wife. Ass. Let's see, guardrails. Don't make their identity the focal point of the character's storyline. Mission failed. We'll get them next time. Do you want to talk about how this presentation is all the time? Okay. And that just makes it that their sole identity. You know, Stephen Young and Walking Dead. Like, if you want to talk about him being Asian, he's just like a person. And that's why I also appreciated his role there. The way he leaps off of rooftops and flips backwards to face the camera before falling into a headfirst dive is just full of the exaggerated swagger of a black teen. It gives me goosebumps every time he does it. Ah yes, of course, because Miles Morales being black has not been a focal point of his character. No sir! That's not the unique thing about Miles! It's always um, a little frustrating when characters' storylines completely only have to do with like being gay and like maybe that means they're only getting like romantic relationship storylines and like those are great, I love those, but it's like there needs to be a little more. She doesn't even know! Wow! Amazing! This is who they hired on board, and they don't even know what else they could possibly show about the queer experience to make it so authentic and unique. Well, that's because there is nothing unique about it. You just like the same sex. 
What more can you do to represent that character other than their sexual preference? You see how little room for creativity there is when you prioritize this? But well, there's also proof right here that you don't have to be queer to write a good queer character. All someone really has to do is know how to write a good character overall. And that's the problem with the people they're hiring here at Insomniac. They don't know how to do that part. All they know what to do is tell you that they're gay, but they can't figure out how to make that look cool or unique on the big screen. Well, I got a news flash for you. That means you're not good at your job. See, my favorite gay character ever written in video games is, well, Gay Tony, obviously. Being gay is actually a focal point of his character and how he's treated, but he's no saint. It's an excellent depiction, but not the type uh, the people here at Insomniac want. They want positively reinforced minority characters. The writing in the Ballad of Gay Tony would not fly by today's standards. But if any of these jackasses at Insomniac need some sort of inspiration to draw, then I would suggest Gay Tony. But none of these people look like they would ever in a million years write a character like that. They can't even get a one-dimensional character off the ground. The only thing they know how to do is ensure the character isn't straight or white. It would be silly for a character to just totally be like separated from their queer identity, but at the same time I think it's important to have a character who has a plot line and struggles and issues and drama separate from their queer identity, because if it's just all about their queer identity, then you're also pitching one of them. See, now that is a perfectly reasonable stance to have. The problem is, it's a direct contradiction towards your original goal. You seek to include more characters based upon the color of their skin or sexual preference. So right off the bat, it was already decided off the bat that these decisions would be made based upon solely queer identity or ethnicity. You struggle to find the perfect balance between this character's identity and their role in the story because these characters are meant to fill a quota they, they weren't conceived of and thought of ahead of time they didn't have a foundation you guys work completely backwards starting with the smallest details first this method doesn't work you can't force it and you're only going to end up making the writing more difficult for yourself there's a reason people remember good character work before they ever remember a character's race gender or any sort of identity people don't think twice about those things when they're so hooked to a character who's so well executed i mean you can take that for me how however you want. I'm not paid to write anything, but I know a well-written character when I see one, and a forced character when I see one. It doesn't take m media literacy to figure that out. So many ways to be a queer woman, um, and that's not something that you see a lot of in media right now, is that kind of like diversity within the identity. Oh, y'all look alike! What are you talking about? It's all we've been seeing in media. LGBT representation is the only thing being highlighted in media. It's the focal point now. And they come in many shapes, sizes, and colors. And there is no end to them. There is absolutely no shortage of queer characters in media. I don't know how anybody in their right mind could think to themselves, we need more right now. It's not enough. There's no end to it. They, they want more. They have no limit. It genuinely blows my mind away that not a single person working on these inclusivity studies ever sits back and thinks to themselves, you know what? Now it feels like we have an overabundance of queer characters. Name me a year in the last 12 years there hasn't been a queer female lead in some film or some piece of media, a video game, a TV show. Name me one year. Hell, name me one month. We haven't had a queer female lead of some sort. Now, if you're having trouble remembering, that's understandable because none of these characters are memorable, and the ones that are memorable are not recognized for any sort of quality writing. Some are simply known for looking like a human Shrek. This idea that, oh, we haven't given the queer women enough screen time, we haven't given them enough of a chance, is absolute bullshit. You guys have run out of short buzz cuts you've run out of different colors to dye your hair you've run out of different types of jean jackets there's no other unique creative way to display what we see on the streets of portland on screen and movies now it's all been done and yet here you are so sure of yourself that you can capture the diversity within the diversity within the diversity of the diversity. They try to make everything woke down to the microscopic level. There's diversity within the Latinx community and I feel like showing the struggles 
for each character will will show the diversity. You'll understand better like why each character acts a certain way within that Latinx community. The the what? Could you uh, repeat that for us again? The Latin what? Latinx community. Here, Representative Minnie Gonzalez speaking about this event. It's it's the day has come. Representative Geraldo Reyes, along with four other Hispanic Democrats, introduced a bill last month in Connecticut to ban the term Latinx from the state's official language. Let's eliminate it from government and educational, higher educational levels. The move comes after Governor Huckabee of Arkansas banned it on her first day in office. Huh. So this is what it feels like to be called the N-word, huh? Ah, the Latinx community, the non-existent community. I don't know a single member of the Latinx community. Every paisa-ass fool I know has treated it like witchcraft. Every beaner I know is on a mission to end this Latinx bullshit. There's a reason why that term only exists on the internet. Try that term on the streets. Do it. Approach a paisa and tell them. Latinx is about as real as the 42 other genders that people have discovered. Insomniac will never, and I mean never, get a single dime from me ever again for supporting this sick, evil ideology. This shit is offensive. I, I mean, legitimately offensive. The idea that our language is no longer good enough to keep up with the idea that gender is a construct. So we shouldn't have gendered language. It should all be neutral. Your people need to change. We're gonna have to force change. This sick, twisted experiment needs to come to an end. Honestly, if you're trying to change the world to that degree, you may need to seek therapy. Porque el hispano no para para nada. Somos una bola de huevones. We're never going to adapt, we're never going to submit, and we're never going to practice this shit. I don't want it in my video games, I don't want it in my movies, I don't want it in my literature, I don't want it in our schools. I want absolutely zero to do with this. And consumers will just shrug it off. They'll overlook it and they'll still hand you over $90 or $100 for the next Spider-Man game. Completely blind and unable to see how media like this affects the world. How there is blatant propaganda being pushed here. Who the hell just wakes up one day and decides, yeah, the entire vocabulary for this language is a problem. We need to make new words up for it to be more inclusive to a population that is most likely not supported in these countries. See, the whole Latinx thing I always thought was niche, but to see it in mainstream media and to see a development studio like Insomniac, who I used to hold in such high regards and respect throughout the majority of my life, adopt this lunacy and go along with it? It's like opening up YouTube one day and seeing Jim Sterling dressed as a chick. I thought it was a joke. And then someone had to explain to me, no, nope, they mean it. These are the folks Insomniac hires. These are the people they have working on your game. People who support anti-whiteness, no gendered Spanish language, trying to make content for solely specific races and no one else. I'm really disappointed in you, Insomnia. I really am. I'm gonna sound like one of these blue hair freaks, but uh, I mean it when I say you've offended me. Look, if you want to throw your rainbow stuff at us, whatever. I can't turn a single corner on my street without seeing rainbow flags. It's so goddamn common. But now you want to introduce new things like Latinx. I'd hate to say it, but the Republicans were right. You give them an inch and they were going to take it as far as possible. Progressives will continue to try and change everything around them until there is nothing to change but themselves. They've worked their way straight into pure lunacy. The minute they ran out of things to fight for, this is what they resort to. Trying to push gender terms out of the Spanish language. This rejection towards gender. It's almost a virus that you can see on people. Not everyone is the same, obviously, but when you look into this crowd and you mix every single face, every single personality you see, you are able to paint the concept of wokeness itself. It has a manifestation. It's a stand even non-stand users can see. Now, luckily for us, we have a chance of swinging things in our favor. We have a chance of seeing this awful experiment die. And that's because this time around, we have the entire Spanish-speaking population to have our backs. It's why Bungie was torn to pieces on social media for promoting this sick, twisted ideology.
So there is a pushback. Honestly, at this point, I'm starting to think these hacks were the greatest thing to ever happen. It's given us insight into Insomniac, and it now makes you wonder, is this what it's like behind the scenes with anyone linked to companies like Sweet Baby Inc.? Do they have their own inclusivity studies groups just like this? Is this where money is being thrown? If so, things need to change immediately. Because you guys don't just get any little pushback online for this. You get obliterated online. It doesn't pass this time around. Do not support this company if you don't support this ideology. That is my recommendation. Speak with your wallet and voice your displeasure online. We've bullied companies into doing what we want plenty of times. We can do it again. Can you believe there's a paycheck written for this chick who's basically been paid to try and represent a community that doesn't exist, the Latinx community. So the next time you see Sony crying about budgets for their big AAA games, don't give them a single bit of sympathy because they've shown us that they're basically just burning piles of money right before our eyes. We have to put some logic within there. When did they leave? If they left, how they were raised? what that was like and that's that's where i would start to create a character because that experience that's gonna affect their life like heavily well if you know how to write them well then yeah but if you don't then you're simply going to make diverse characters for the sake of it and end up with a ridiculous amount see unfortunately there's nothing unique about being queer in real life there's nothing that makes you special for it and the same goes for skin color that is why it is difficult to write something interesting around it you have to have lived experiences characters backgrounds traits and ethnicity serve far less significance than the overall role a character will play because at the end of the day that is what matters the most the role they play how they influence the story the smaller details can be filled in later which include gender race well that's the problem though these ladies have been hired to create the characters from the ground up to be diverse for the sake of it in their minds they don't actually have a character with purpose or meaning written out ahead of time because they don't have that kind of experience let's face it they can barely put into words on camera what they're aiming to do or why they do it let's see uh do, do not use identity as a shortcut for morality ah roll the clip again mission failed we'll get them next time no men were not the hero Always the villain. I'm sorry, but excuse me. What? When are black people made the villains the majority of time in film? What? When? He just pulled that out of his ass. There are Afro Latinas that like get their their light skinned. I feel like their roles are a lot different from the dark skinned ones. Even in animation, like the fact that Scar was darker than Mufasa and Simba. If they're family, why couldn't they all have been the same shape? But you know, the darker was the evil and, and things like that. Oh my god, this coming generation is so fucked. I feel bad for them. Everything they're about to learn about the world will be seen through the lens of people like this. All they see is race, all they see is gender, all they see is sexual orientation. To the point that they now point out how much darker a cartoon character is shaded on screen. And they want to tie that into actual skin color. We've lost it. We've completely lost it! It's perfectly normal for males from the same litter to have different color manes. Well, never mind that. This is just a color palette choice. Its purpose is completely artistic. It's not rooted in any sort of offensive views towards minority characters. You guys are inserting yourself here. Today's generation will simply not be able to put up with something like spy versus spy. If color palette choices are how they detect systemic racism or whatever, then that show would drive them wild. <laughs> As long as like the villain is just like a villain because he himself as a person is a villain and it's not because of his identity that he's portrayed as a villain. Part of what good representation means is really just that like queer characters can be anything. They can be the hero, they can be the villain, they can be whatever. You start getting into a problem when it's like the queerness itself being villainized. 
take things that never happened for 500. Point to me a piece of media villainizing queer identity right now. Where? Where does such film exist? Where does such piece of media exist? I haven't seen something like that in over 20 years. What video game out right now or in the last 10, 12, 20 years villainized homosexuality? People have been applauding this for a very, very, very long time. And if someone did have the balls to make a piece of media like that, they'd have to be very creative to get away with it. Because it would have to be meaningful and purposeful writing. You'd have to be taking a risk, something that no Hollywood writer dares to do these days. Especially when it comes to video games. No developer will ever allow you to have fun exploring a moral compass like Fallout New Vegas did. If they won't even allow you to roleplay as a homophobe or transphobe in video games, what makes you think minority characters are villainized to any degree? Embrace that spoken language carries additional meaning. Yeah, you know what? No, th th it was that mentality that led to the whole Latinx bullshit. I would feel so much better if when I see a character and he's speaking and he says something that's like specific to my culture because he's from it, I would be all oh, like, oh my God, like, that's, that's great. Yes, yeah, that dead expressive, oh my God, really had me sold. I, I truly believe you really care about this. Oh wow, they referenced Africa. Isn't that cool, guys? Whoa, that makes me feel better. The most dead high NPC thing I have ever heard. Is this a human? Is there a soul in there? This person doesn't look like they give two shits about what they just said, or let alone we're paying attention to what they said. We feel closer to each other when we hear the language, um, but when we hear it spoken correctly, it kind of, the closest is even stronger. I mean, uh, yeah, I guess it is pretty nice when it's not just a gabacho saying everything. To have an authentic Spanish accent can make a hell of a difference. I mean, just look at Breaking Bad and how much it hurts certain scenes when the character's Spanish accent is completely off. Now, you guys say uh, that makes you grow closer or some cringe shit. I say it just adds more authenticity. So, that kind of thing in general was true for everything first. We're happy to hear someone talking Spanish, Puerto Rican Spanish, and we're like, oh, are you Puerto Rican? Where are you from? Oh yeah, I grew up there, and like, that's who we are, you know, we like to find each other. Well, that's nice and all, but uh, how are you going to accomplish that when you're accidentally putting in the Cuban flag instead? Be careful of emasculating male Asian characters. Why, why just the Asians? Why not all male characters? It's Zodiac, who have you hired? These are some sick, twisted people. No man wants to be emasculated. But I guess, uh, according to Insomniac, that's something only certain races are afforded. Oh my god. I can't even find racism like this in a synthetic man video. Treat different races differently is the complete opposite of trying to be diverse and inclusive. They want to be diverse and inclusive, but forget that whole part about equality. You ever notice these inclusive diversity hires? They never talk about equality because they don't view different races equal or different sexes equal. By their own admission too, as we've seen throughout this video. You know, the funniest part too is they say, be careful about it. They don't tell you not to do it when it should go without saying uh, don't emasculate any man media depictions have been uh sort of very emasculating portrayal of asian men they like don't make the guy seem like a sexy guy or just like someone who's attractive and has attractive qualities just kind of like that like funny asian dude in that movie who has an accent who's kind of like goofy looking or like nerdy looking you know why do they say that like Asian men haven't been some of the biggest action film stars of all time. Jet Li, Jackie Chan, Tony Jaw, Bruce Lee, Donnie Yen. Honestly, the, the more I watch this video and the more I think about all the media I've consumed, I can easily say we have been very diverse and inclusive for a long time. We've had just about every single race play every single role. Not once have I seen unfair representation. Although I will agree with them, we, we 
having a masculinating problem in media, but it's not narrowed down to one race, it's all of men. But then that means they would have to include the white people. Ugh. Reactions to portrayals in Pop-Tart. Who had insomnia? Put this video package together. How is it possible? They are this incompetent and make this many mistakes. The audio was fucked. It's all over the place. I had to adjust it to really hear what they were saying. The edits are too abrupt and cut out what people were saying far too early. Like this entire video package is a disaster. Some of the people are too shy to even look at the camera. And somehow they've accidentally left misspelled words in the transitional text. Why is it every single diversity group put together, tasked with something basic, always fail. If this was put together for some board of directors to view, I would immediately pull all funding from that group and fire their asses. Visually, I think it's, it's an exceptional job done. With the way his hair is structured, skin tone, his English, not like what he was saying, but the accent sounded very white. It does not sound like he's from New York. And I'm like, is he hiding his accent? Is he trying to be different? Like, when he's like, mom, like, he's like, mom. Oh my god. The way they're talking about it, they're acting like the white people that were obsessed with Chris when he showed up to their house and Get Out. Wow, look at his features. So clearly black. Impressive. It's like an art for them. Connoisseurs of race. Insane. They're more proud of how black and Puerto Rican Miles Morales turned out to be than how good he was portrayed as Spider-Man. Oh yeah, and you guys are so proud of that hairdo. It's why you created that ugly-ass costume that has his fro sticking out. And, you know, you really gotta remind people that this is Miles Morales instead of just calling him Spider-Man. Yeah, they're young black people and this is based in Brooklyn. I expect them to use some sort of urban slang label. <laughs> what kind of urban slang were you thinking? Uh, the kind that would land you rated M? You know, the kind of urban slang rappers are really fond of? You know, for as authentic as you guys try to make them out to be. Uh, Miles is pretty whitewashed. He's about as black as the ESG will allow him to be. Now, I think this is the part of the video where I'm going to stop because I'm not gonna lie to you. The audio balancing makes it a very big issue. Well, that and a mixture of the fact that a lot of the people they're interviewing just don't speak up. They just mumble their words out. It's like they got peanut butter stuck in their throats. The background music is too loud and it drowns them out. And when you do increase their own audio, you don't even understand what they're saying. The one who speaks the clearest is this one chick with the black Tina shirt on. Now, I don't understand the full purpose of this video package. I don't know why it was put together. All I do know is that it was only meant to be shared within the company. I don't think this was supposed to get out, even though it's filmed like a small documentary. But whatever they set out to accomplish by putting it together, I'm pretty sure they failed at. Half the people in this don't even look like they want to be on camera. Hell, they look like they don't even want to be at Insomnia Games. All I can tell you is that a big portion of funding goes towards bullshit like this, and they still manage to fail at their job. But if you wanted any insight into the woke's world, their mindset, how they function on an industrial level, here it is. Unqualified people for jobs that serve no actual real world purpose. And it's only going to get worse. How do I know? Because we first started off with representing gay characters. Now we gotta represent non-binary. Oh, now we gotta represent trans. Oh, now we gotta represent the other 52 genders. And now it's like, oh, we gotta include Latinx folks now. More will be added. It's not going to get better. Insomniac Games has quadrupled down on this. This is their priority. This is how serious they take it. Continuity is not as important as representation to them. I am honest to God surprised I didn't see more YouTubers covering this. Uh, to be fair, all, all the people that do cover this type of content, they already knew it was like this behind the scenes. They, they didn't have a proper depiction of it. All they had were little quotes here and there. But this time around, we have it on camera. What all these anti-woke, anti-SJW channels were saying all along 
is true, so we owe them an apology. I mean, at least I do. It's easy to laugh until the evidence is out there. You hear them cry about anti-whiteness, and you want to laugh at them and say, ha ha, you're being just like the SJWs, but then you come to realize that this anti-whiteness sentiment does indeed exist, and it's financially backed by very powerful entities. And all of a sudden, you question what is crazy anymore. Was the man who was shouting on the corner of the street really that crazy to begin with now? Was the person shaking my hand with the most perfect smile and all the right words to say, reassuring me this doesn't exist. Was that the face of craziness this entire time? Well, either way, it doesn't matter that it was finally proven because now the narrative has shifted. Now all the people denying it are arguing, well, so what if it exists? What's the actual harm, eh? And none are more guilty than David Jaffe, who had the gall to come out and try and stand up for Sweet Baby Inc. If I wasn't convinced he was doing it just for the views, I would be responding to that jackass right now. It's time we stop allowing all these people on social media to gaslight us, telling us, ugh, there are more important things to worry about in the world. Yes, there are, but I'm focused on this right now. And you trying to invalidate my concerns isn't gonna change anything. There's hard evidence, proof, that a lot of this LGBT stuff is manufactured and corporate and aimed at the youth. The left doesn't want us to concern ourselves with conspiracy theories. Why? Well, that's because that's where the truth is found oftentimes. Even if the information is exaggerated, there's still truth in it all. I mean, just look at New York. You got Jews popping out of sewer tunnels with secret passageways hidden in their temples. And we're all just treating it like casual news when things like this were conspiracy theories for decades. Now, I know that British kid's gonna come out and be like, this is a brain dead argument, Fritanga. But I ain't listening to no more people from the UK. Because from where I'm standing, your ultra lefty woke politics have not worked out for you and have done just as much damage as it has done to us. You're not better, you're just progressing faster towards doom. Now I for one have made up my mind, I'm no longer gonna be quiet about it. I'm not gonna be a fence sitter about it. And what's more, I'm not going to pretend like it doesn't exist because that is even worse. You, you can tell when I actually care about a topic when I've dragged on for this long about it. I've done a huge disservice to the gaming community by having spent so much time trying to treat both sides like they're equally delusional. See, I never swore off talking about politics on this channel. I just swore off sounding like someone who's far left or far right. But even that has lost all meaning. What's far right to some folks can be simply not believing a man could be a woman. What are conspiracy theories today are reality the next day. So going forward, I'm not going to so easily dismiss the crowd who's quick to point out anything being woke. Cause so far where I'm standing, nine out of 10 times they have been absolutely correct. Sure, maybe heel versus babyface didn't need to have that embarrassing rant, but low key, that's me on the inside right now towards the whole Latinx push. Insomniac is dead to me. This is not something I can morally or financially support. I'm sorry. You know, but outside of that, it seems like entertainment wise, it's not something the crowds are supporting either. Hence why go woke, go broke is such a popular catchphrase. Ah, oh, damn. Oh my god, I feel good to get off my fucking chest. Sorry, lately Daddy Fritz has been having to play older games to escape the new norm. It's honestly unbelievable how drastic of a difference 12 years has made to the gaming industry and media in general. Look, we're not getting back what we lost, but if you wanna have fun recalling all of those fond memories, then why don't you hit like, comment, share, or subscribe. Become a part of this channel where we can all be miserable together. Long live cynicism. May it never die. Cause it's the only thing that's always there to save humanity at the last minute when it fucks up. With that being said, I'll see you in the next one. <laughs> Free Congo sucks ass. <laughs> <laughs>